Good morning. morning. I'm always blessed and honored to be asked to come to this beautiful, loving community. The minute I walk in the door, I feel like I'm wrapped in a blanket of love. So it's a testament to all of your consciousness and who shows up at a community like this. And especially from your spiritual leader, Amy. Hi, Amy. I know that you're with us. Congratulations on the grandbaby. It's beautiful. So, cultivating courage. I came up with a title, and it's a mouthful. Are you ready for this? (laughs) The title that came through was Cultivating Ourselves for Unlimited radical, abundant gratitude and expansion, which equals courage. (laughs) I know, it's a lot, right? (laughs) Um, So what exactly is courage, right? According to Merriam-Webster, mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand Danger, fear, or difficulty. So there's our starting point. Let's start with that verb, cultivate. Here we are in spring, you guys. It's that time to plant seeds. But you don't go and plant a seed in soil that isn't prepared. You have to till the soil. (laughs) I heard a few groans. There's some work to be done, right? There might be rocks, there might be uh, thorns, there might be old branches there. So we get to do this work and cultivate and prepare. All right, so as we take this journey together today, I'm going to show you how important it is that we are knowing and feeling that we are connected to one. Because there's a lot of things we can do in this life. We can all gather the strength and the willpower to make things happen. But that doesn't last unless we are connected to our power and presence that I call God. So that is my undercurrent of what I, where I am speaking from today. We are unlimited energetic beings. And you'll hear more about that at the Energy Codes workshop after, so make sure you stay. <laughs> Giving myself a plug. <laughs> so with faith... Opportunities come from difficulties. It brings us unlimited ways to fulfill our purpose of what we're to do on this planet while we're here. And without those things, let's call them fears, otherwise known as false evidence appearing real, those fears, they don't stop us. They don't have to stop us. They get to come along with us. In a little bit, I'm going to tell you a quick story about my travels when I was 21 to Europe (laughs) and talk a little bit about how fearful I was and how it didn't stop me. But those fears are doorways and not walls, if we let them be. Franklin Roosevelt said, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. Fear can be a great motivator. I don't know about you, but I have to admit something. 
I spend some time on YouTube and Facebook. And they show these great little videos of fathers and mothers tending after their little ones. And these little ones are about to take a step into a pool or a step off of a high curb. And somehow, it looks like a miracle. The parent catches them and scoops them up. It looks like a miracle, and what it is is fear that's cultivating that, that courageousness in that parent. Sometimes you see these little kids, it looks like they're going to fall and smash, and there's the father right there, and he scoops them up and saves them. The fear helped them be in action. And sometimes it looks like a radical feat, that they've done, but it's not. It's their purpose to be here on this planet looking after their child. So to live a courageous life is to stop being angry for what we don't have and honor and be grateful for what we do have. When we look at our lives, and when I look at my life, I choose daily to be abundantly grateful. And you know what? It doesn't matter if there's $5 or $500 or $5,000 in my account. I am grateful for what's there. I think all of you know because you're here. You're my spiritual brothers and sisters. Some of you have I've met before and some are new. We are on this journey together to know that we are hugely abundant because we are aware we're here. We know there is one. And that courage that I cultivated starting around 17 years old afforded me to take a trip and test my courage when I was at a place that I didn't know what I was going to do. I was going to art school in San Francisco. My parents got a divorce and said, there's no more money. We can no longer send you to school. And I said, what am I going to do? <laughs> so what I did was I bought a one-way ticket to Europe. <laughs> and I bought a train pass. And I went there to, I suppose, test, test my, my faith my trust in spirit. See, my, my first teacher taught me at, at 17 how to meditate. She also taught me that I was the light. So I went to Europe not knowing maybe a few people. I knew someone in Milan and someone in Israel. And I had my train pass, and sometimes I traveled with a friend, and sometimes I traveled on my own. And if I got off the train, you guys, and I put my foot down on that soil, and it didn't feel right, I spun around and got back on the train. I traveled for six months. People said, you're so brave, Cindy. And I didn't really take that in, because I didn't really understand that this trip was for me to cultivate my bravery and my trust in spirit, in my practice, in my purpose. But I want to tell you about someone that is an inspiration to me in so many ways. His name is Nick Vujicic. 
Nick is one of the most courageous beings I've ever seen or heard on this planet. Nick was born to this world without any arms and any legs. Yeah, you might have seen him. He does motivational talks all over the planet. He is amazing. Think about this. This little baby is born. He's got no arms and no legs, and the doctors don't know what to tell the parents because they haven't really seen this. So they tell the parents, he's probably going to just be a vegetable and lead a miserable life. You should just home him and move on. Ugh. Right? His parents are courageous. They were not willing to do that. And they came from a place of love and faith, knowing that God doesn't make any mistakes. Nick is about 37 now. He's got a wife and kids. He has an amazing life. And he talks about the obstacles that became opportunities. He talks about the doors, he, excuse me, the walls that became doors. So as a kid, he was teased. You know how kids can be in school? I was one of those kids. I wasn't teasing, I was getting teased. He got teased and gawked at and told that he would never amount to anything. That he was ugly and he should just go away. And you guys, here he is today speaking to millions of people all over the planet. He talks about a miracle. That when he was a child, he was looking for a miracle. Yeah, okay, an arm growing back, a leg growing back, no, no, no. He was wanting somebody that looked like him to come to him and say, hey, you know what? I know this is tough. I know this is hard, and you can do it, and here's how, and here's why. He didn't have that. So one day, he was doing one of his inspirational talks, and he looked out in the audience, and he saw a 19-month-old baby boy with no arms and no legs. And that's when he recognized, I didn't get the miracle for my life, but I get to be the miracle for this little baby's life. One of my teachers at Agape, she always said, our mess is our message. Right? There's not one soul on this planet that hasn't had challenges, that hasn't uh, mounted up to what they think they should be or could be at some point in their life. That is here for a reason. I think about all those times when I was in grade school. <laughs> I don't know why I'm re remembering this, but I had to get up in front of the class and, and uh, recite a poem about Hiawatha. <laughs> And I remember being so scared. The words wouldn't even come out. So, a kid with no arms and no legs 
has made a profound difference in so many lives. He shows up 110%, no matter what he does. Now here's the key. He shows up. Is there somewhere in your life that you're not showing up? We all have those areas. And you don't know what a profound effect you'll have on people by just being in this room, getting out of the house, opening a door for someone, smiling. I'm a big follower of Brene Brown. I love her work. And she says, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. That's the first step. So when fear seems like it's stopping us, know that fear is just a part of the process. It's a part of life. Courage and fear are not mutually exclusive, you guys. It's a package deal. But here's the good news. <laughs> you can cultivate it. You can train yourself. Like going to the gym, and you start with five pounds, and then you move to 10 pounds. You can go out there in the world and take one little step at a time. Hey, and if you're the kind of person that likes to do a free fall and just jump off the cliff, hopefully with a parachute, <laughs> I say go for it. Show up as your authentic self. <laughs> the other thing about Nick, I want to go back to him for a second, is when those kids were teasing him and he'd look in the mirror, when he was a kid, he believed them. But when he got to that place of knowing who he is and what his purpose is on this planet, he looks in the mirror and he sees his value. I have plenty of my own stories about not seeing my value. And I have plenty of stories since embarking on my spiritual path about seeing and knowing my value. I'm a work in progress, as are all of, all of us, right? So, Brene, also, Brene Brown also talks about vulnerability. This is me being vulnerable. I'm willing to stand in sometimes the discomfort of being in front of a room, because I'm not one of those people that uh, was in drama club. We're getting a call. <laughs> I wasn't one of those people, you guys. And I had lots of friends that were wonderful um, actors and actresses, and they loved to be in the spotlight. I've always been a behind-the-scenes kind of girl, right? I was always behind the camera. I'm a great photographer. I'm a great artist. But I was behind it. I wasn't in the spotlight. And it's not that I want to be in the spotlight. It's what I'm called to do. So I get to be here in fear and still be courageous and talk to all of you beautiful people. So I just want you just for a moment to 
close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And come up with that one area of your life. Maybe there's more, but the one that comes up first, that's just been waiting for you to show up. And when you have that in mind, we're going to flip the dialogue and not should yourself any longer. See that one area as your door. This is your gateway. to courage. This is that place that you get to train and cultivate you as a courageous being. It is not something daunting or cursing you. It's calling you to pass the threshold. It might be a millimeter or a centimeter at a time, and it might be one big, bold step. And when you're ready, come back to the room. And from the words from Nelson Mandela, courage is not the absence of fear but the triumph over it. The last quote that I found, there's 10 million quotes on courage, you guys. Um, there was this quote from John Wayne, and I thought it was quite appropriate. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. <laughs> I don't know if there's any horse folks in here. I'm not necessarily one of them, but I have friends that own horses, and I love all animals. And I appreciate that metaphor. So together, let's saddle up. Let's saddle up and be courageous, Take a step. Do what, what our life is calling us to do. It's okay if you're fearful. It's okay if you're scared. Do it anyway. Reach out to a friend that's in this room and say, hey, there's something I've been wanting to do. There's a club or a trip or a person that I want to meet, and I've been afraid. Will you just pray for me? Will you hold me in the knowing that I can do this? So let's saddle up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.